Right then, good morning everybody. I uh, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our latest uh, product related webinar. Uh, hopefully you're all finding this series of webinars uh, really useful. We've had some, some really good feedback so far, so thank you to those who have uh, taken the time to provide feedback. It's really useful. Uh, now the idea of, of this series of webinars is to kind of educate and re-educate our partner channel with regards to the product in our portfolio. Now as you know we are now regularly releasing new products and also enhancing the products that we've had uh, historically. So again the idea of these webinars is to kind of just recap and refresh and, and review our knowledge in terms of where we were up to with those products. So uh, as I say hopefully you're finding them useful. The one we're doing today is all about call recording which as you know call recording as a product that's been around for many Many, many years um, and it's been a, a kind of staple product within our portfolio for, for a significant amount of time. Although over the past 12, 6, uh, even last quarter there have been some significant improvements to our um, offering with, with regards to core recording. Now um, I, I will touch on today kind of where core recording sits in the market, who it works for, where it um, kind of where, where it can sit in your portfolio. But I think probably what I would suggest you do is you really spend some time with your account manager working through this as, uh, and your sales team. Because as far as I'm concerned, um, I genuinely believe that core recording as a product and as a service should sit as one of the highest um, kind of generating products, ARPU increasing products that should that sit within your, your portfolio because uh, as far as I'm concerned th there isn't a customer who shouldn't have core recording in some format within their operation. So, um, so I would strongly suggest you and your sales team you spend some time together refreshing your knowledge, uh, maybe re-watching this webinar uh, and then going, kind of going to market with a strong core recording offering. So in terms of um, what I've just started there by saying where does core recording sit, we will briefly just touch on kind of where it's used. Now by all means this, no, this list is by no means kind of exhaustive, this is just, just some of the most common uh, scenarios where we see core recording used. Now, one of the, the, the most obvious ones for me which gets missed by the vast majority of salespeople who I work with is sales training. Now that's not necessarily just for new starters but also for the current staff and the legacy staff you, you have within an organization or your customers have rather within an organization. So in a, um, in a previous life I was head of sales for a mobile focused uh, comms company. Now I have regular one-to-ones with my uh, telesales team every fortnight and in, in that one-to-one -one meeting they would be responsible for coming to that meeting with two call recordings that we would listen to together and we'd do some coaching on and some training on. Now maybe for the first four or five meetings, those call recordings that they brought to the meeting were probably the best calls that they had in the previous week. But after four or five weeks, they started coming to the, uh, to the training session with the most difficult calls they had, the ones where they feel maybe they missed an opportunity, where the customer asked questions they couldn't answer, where they didn't win the deal. And that become really, really powerful training sessions every fortnight where we could listen to the call, analyze it together, and really put a good training program around and areas to improve on. So sales training, as I say, but that often gets missed when we're, um, when we're dealing with end users. They don't often see the, um, the value in that. But for me, it's probably one of the, one of the easiest ones to convince. Then you've got obviously efficiency in handling customer service queries. We hear examples all the time of, um, of uh, customer, let's just say customer service issues where they've um, suggested that what that was agreed on on the phone was not what was actually happening. Well, having the ability to simply just jump back into the portal, grab the call recording, and send it to the customer. Nine times out of ten, you'll find that call recording resolves um, resolves the customer issue. Uh, and then we've got sales for inbound uh, recording of, of inbound sales inquiries. Historically, what's the alternative is to make notes and to send emails and to distribute the call um, via text around the around the business. But internally, if what, uh, if Ian Sinnott, our sales director, if he was to speak to one of my business partners, if I was unavailable, then instead of sending me an email with what was uh, said on the call, he would just send me the, the the call recording. So not only can I get the um, kind of what was agreed, but I also get the context as well and kind of how the conversation flowed, which is really powerful. 
Um, and then finally, we, we see very often now more and more um, examples where customers need their call recorders, not necessarily want, but they need their calls recorders for compliancy purposes in several different ways. So but again, this is just a, a, a very short list. As we work through the presentation, we'll probably come up with some scenarios, but uh, I'll just reiterate previous points, spend some time with your account manager and your sales team on, on kind of honing in this list and really coming up with quite an exhaustive list of, of when you go to see a customer, who you should be talking to about call recording and, and where it would sit within their organization. So um, in terms of our product, we um, don't just offer one level of call recording, we offer multiple options within the product. Now this again is, it was an enhancement we made last year, so it's no longer just one size fits all. You have the ability, and we'll, we'll talk about these things in more detail as we go through, to pause call recordings, maybe to take card payments, uh, maybe to uh, if you're having a, a, a kind of a... Um, uh, a more private conversation, you can pause the call recording, and have that and resume it. And their ability to, to start call recordings if they're not recorded by default. But again, we'll talk about these things as we go through. We're offering multiple different levels or, or, or options rather to store your call recordings. We give as standard as default 90 days, which in terms of the marketplace against our competition is a really strong offering. Uh, we see most other um, competitors in our space offering 30 days, one month storage. We're offering three months free of charge storage. And that's irrelevant or, 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 or regardless rather of how um, many calls or the storage uh, in terms of gigabytes within that 90 days, it's free regardless of those things. But not only can you set that as a business, you can also set those things at user level. So it may be that the managing director wants to store his calls or her calls indefinitely within the portal, although for their inbound customer service team, they only need them for 90 days. So this thing is, um, so this storage level is not just configurable at business, but also right the way down to an end user. Um, then we've got security. Again, an enhancement we, we made last year was um, in order to give different people in an organization, different levels of call recording, therefore managing director can only have um, hair calls listened to by other people at, at their level within an organization. The salespeople can only listen to their calls and nobody above them. So uh, we'll talk about that a bit more as we go through, but again, really strong offering and, and something that's quite unique within our space. The ability to bulk export or call recordings, whether that be all or just a select within, within the portal, again, we found it's fairly unique and a great offering. And then we've got other things in here, such as uh, one of our most recent updates to the product, which is an audit log. Now, we'll show, I'll show you where you can access the audit log later, but now is you have a full trail of every single call that's been listened to within the portal and by which portal user. So, for example, a managing director who didn't want or sales director who didn't want uh, their calls to be listened to, we can set their security level appropriately, um, but they would still be able to, if uh, some, someone else within their security level listen to their calls, they'd be able to see an audit log of who and what calls they listen to. Okay. Uh, and then again, just to close here, just to reiter reiterate my previous point, in regards to our product portfolio, this is one of the key ARPU increasing products that you should be selling to every single customer. It's not just a feature that you should be giving away, it's a product that you can genuinely earn some significant uh, revenue on. That's both on, both on the service itself, but also the storage um, of the call recording. Both of these things give you an opportunity to increase your ARPU, increase your GP, and increase obviously your, uh, your stakeholder with the customer. So moving on to the call recording options, I previously mentioned that there are various different ways that you can record uh, calls on a per user basis. Now that's a key thing to remember here. Now you can have 20 people in, in an organization and they can have, uh, in, in groups of people can have uh, different types, their calls can be recorded in, with, uh, in these different options. So it, it's not a case that everybody has to have the same setting, it can be bespoke to the individuals who that specific option is, is appropriate to. Now first is we've got the most obvious one which is always. So all calls in and out of an organization would be recorded. That also includes internal calls which is key here. So for somebody like uh, an inbound uh, customer service or salesperson, you are probably going to want to record every single one of their calls, not give them the ability to, uh, to cancel a call recording or pause the call recording, is you will want those calls to be recorded regardless of who they're speaking to. So that's the first option. 
Second is on demand. Now, uh, this most often gets um, likened to Sky Plus in a sense that you choose the calls that you want to record. Now, let's just say you're 30 minutes into a conversation with the customer, and then you realise actually this we've 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 had some re there's been some really good content in this call, or they've asked some really good questions, or whatever it may be. In 30 minutes into that conversation, you can then decide as a user to hit that call recording button which will not only capture the call from the 30 minutes onwards, but when you export it from the, call, from, from the portal, you'll have the, the full call from start to finish or from cradle to grave. So you can be, uh, let's just think of somebody else, let's just say a, um, a finance manager or somebody working in the accounts team who doesn't ordinarily want to record their calls, but when they get into that conversation with the customer, which is going fine for the first 10 minutes, and then maybe starts to be disputing payments or, or whatever it may be, hit the call recording button at that point, but when you export it from the portal, you'll have the full call from start to finish. Uh, the third option is never. So obviously is, uh, it may be, I don't know, let's just say it's the HR manager who all of their calls that they have are really confidential. They're talking about sensitive information and they don't want to record those calls recorded. So you obviously, they can have the option to, to, to not instigate the call recording or pause with you. None of their calls will be recorded. Then we've got always with pause and resume. Now this would give an end user the ability either via on the on, uh, via the, the portal, the desktop, sorry, not the portal, the desktop application Unity, or on the handset itself, pause the call recording. Now we see this used in many different ways. Most common is taking call payments as an example. Your agent will be um, in, a, in a conversation, need to take a call payment, they pause the call recording, the customer gets a beep, uh, in their ear, they then provide the agent with the card details, they then resume the call recording manually again, and you've got, uh, when you export the call, obviously the, the section in the, in, in the center won't have those uh, card details recorded. But alternatively, it may just be that senior management in, in an organization, um, they want to record as default all of their calls, because most of the conversations they have, they want recorded, but it may be the odd call here and there which they have, which is confidential, which is private, they can hit the, uh, the pause button and therefore that call um, from the moment they push the, 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 the pause button will not be recorded, which is great. And then finally, we've got user uh, on-demand uh, on with the user-initiated start. Now this is very similar to the on-demand which I've mentioned above, which is a bit like the Sky Plus, although on this version, you only get the call recording from the moment that you hit that um, the button to record the calls. So whereas on the on in the on demand, you hit the on uh, the, the record button and you will get the start to finish of the call, despite the fact you um, you only started 35 minutes into the conversation. With the on demand and user initiated start, you will only get from 35 minutes on to the end of the call. Hopefully that's explained, cleared up uh, any confusion or, or clarified our, our, our position or our offerings. But I'd say these can be bespoke to every individual within an organization. Now when it comes to playing back the calls, um, with the two options you've probably seen within the portal, the call logger call center uh, report, which is now available for more call center focused uh, organizations that have maybe uh, a higher volume of calls or, or the calls have multiple legs. Uh, but the standard way to access the call recordings is via the call logger, which is great because not only can you have visibility of and view all of the calls, but you can also just select to just view the recorded ones. Historically, we have the call recordings and the call logger in two separate locations. We've merged them, we've made it simpler, we've made the user experience better by putting those calls and the call logger in one place. It just makes the, uh, the user experience a little bit more streamlined. But within the portal, um, in this call logger uh, report, you get the ability, and we'll jump in and we'll look at this, to search for all of the criteria you would imagine. You can search by a particular user in your business, a time and date, a range of time and date, a time specific, uh, specific. You can look at the outbound number, the inbound number. You can look at all of the things that you would imagine uh, in order to make that, finding that call really, really easy. But again, we'll jump in and we'll look at that. Uh, and then in, in regards to playing back the actual call, there are two options. You can play it from the portal 
itself by just hitting the play button, which you can see on the right hand side there. Um, so if you just needed to, to, to listen to it for reference, you can do it straight from within the portal and then you're not taking up any of your hard drive space on your desktop. Or alternatively, if you do need to send it to a customer or you do need to save it for your own reference, then you can download it from the portal as well, which are both really simple to do. Now I mentioned before that there are security levels and there are four different security levels. So if we think of it, an environment, let's just say a standard office, they've probably got some telesales, they've probably got a telesales team leader, they've probably got some middle management and they've probably got some senior management. Now within that organization, you can then set up that all of the, um, the customer service team or the telesales rather are set to low, prior, uh, low security level, which means that oh, when they log into the portal, they can only access their own core recordings. Um, but somebody like a team leader would probably need to be me medium. They want to listen to their own core recordings, but they also want to listen to the people or have access to listen to the people who are below them set at the low security level. And then obviously, therefore, moving up the chain, the managing director, the CEO would have access to listen to their core recordings, but also the ability to listen to the people who are set at priorities less than theirs. Now, when you, when you build the business, the default position is medium. You can then go in and be changed at user level. So again, this is something that's quite important to remember when you're setting up a business, when you're talking to your end users, to your customers, uh, when you're onboarding them. This is something that you should be talking about in terms of getting a list of the people and who, uh, what rather their security level should be within the portal. Uh, now, I mentioned the uh, having access to core recordings. You can set right in the portal roles. Now, I'm sure you're probably all familiar with UBOSS and giving customers access to UBOSS. In the portal roles, core recording is something you can uh, turn on or off. So it may be that you want somebody to have uh, the ability to go and create hunt groups or, or change people around in hunt groups or create new users or, or just access reports, but not listen to call recordings. You can set that as an administrator within the portal that they don't have access to them. So this is something that you will turn on or off when you create a portal user. And the last thing there is that the, uh, the calls can be uh, listened to or, or played back from, from various different levels. So I'll go back, linking that back to the, the actual user themselves. If you can set up a user so they can only listen to their own call recordings within the portal. Great. Now, I mentioned earlier that when it comes to call recording storage, we offer 90 days free of charge. So if I make a call today, that call will be stored in the portal for 90 days, uh, at which point I then have various options which I can choose from. Now, the first option I've got is, let's just say, as an organization, we don't need calls for more than 90 days. The vast amount of training that we do is within 90 days. The vast amount of customer service inquiries we have is within 90 days. Therefore, after 90 days, we can set up in the portal to automatically delete the call recordings. And that's the key thing here versus our, our, our kind of our competitors in this space, is what we're doing here is automatically generated or, or is it an automatic action based on the criteria that you set within the portal. So after 90 days, the calls can automatically be purged, deleted, and therefore your customer will not incur any storage costs whatsoever because all of their calls are deleted after 90 days. Now, the second option is within the portal, you can set up how long you want those calls to be stored for. So it may be that you want calls to be for, stored for a minimum in the portal of 12 months, sorry, not the minimum, but for 12 months. So therefore, if I was to make a call today, I would make, get the first 90 days of that storage free, and then I would pay for the remaining nine months of storage in the portal, at which point, after 12 months, it would be deleted, and I would not pay storage costs for any point past those, uh, past those 12 months. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is set on a user level, so it may be that the managing director needs their calls for two years. However, the sales team only need their calls for 12 months. This can be set up on a user level, uh, a user level for how long that person needs the storage. So the first option is we delete them after 90 days, no storage cost for your customer. The second option is you set a time frame within the portal. It could even be indefinitely. Um, for which you want the calls to be recorded, they'll get the first 90 days FOC, and then they will pay storage on a per gigabyte basis from that point on. 
Now you've got to think from your customer's perspective, um, that cost is obviously going to increase every single month as the value of the volume of calls, as the volume of storage, as the per gigabyte increases. Um, so therefore, you obviously need to factor that in with your customer. From your point of view, as a, as a reseller providing the service, that's great because within the portal you set your cost per gigabyte, you uplift our cost from you, and therefore every month as that customer's vo uh, volume of, of gigabyte storage increases, so does your revenue, so does your ARPU. And that's how this is a product that simply by setting up at day one, your, gen your, your, your um, GP, your, your ARPU will continue to grow as long as you have that customer, providing that their calls are stored within the portal. Now the third option you, option you have is the ability to automatically take the calls out of UBOS and put them into a customer's uh, server on their site via FTP. Now what we've seen with our um, in the market space is that this is historically it's been a very manual process. Customers have to log into the portal, have to uh, remember at the end of each month to log in and export the calls. Uh, and if they don't, they obviously automatically get charged. With our solution, you can set up a time frame from 30 minutes onwards for which those calls will automatically be taken from you, boss, and stored on your customer's server. Now, there is a cost for that facility, which is the call recording group copy service, so they'll need to have that assigned, but that's a f unlike the, uh, the incremental growth of, of uh, call recording storage, it's a fixed cost, so the customer knows at day one what their cost is going to be indefinitely for call recording, because they know every 30 minutes or, or every day, a, 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 um, a kind of a duration of the uh, of their choice that UBOS via FTP will transfer the calls into their server and then after 90 days they will be deleted. The customer never pays for storage within UBOS. They will obviously only have to uh, account for the cost of setting up an FTP server and, and storage locally, but maybe that's something that they're, they're more comfortable with managing. Now we'll jump into UBOS and we'll look at this, um, uh, sorry, into Unity and we'll look at how these, um, how call recording is controlled within Unity. But we try to simplify, again, the user experience. Trying to pull recordings or start call recordings via the handset itself can be a little bit more cumbersome. The user experience not as good. By bringing this functionality into Unity, we streamline that user experience. But we'll jump into Unity and I'll, uh, I'll show you how that works. So if we jump into uh, my Unity, I'm using Unity Desktop Pro here as an example. You can see at the top, I've got call recording as a product uh, within my uh, me as a user within the portal within the UBOS portal which means I have access to this button up here now if I right click because I'm uh, uh, effectively I, I do demonstrations and I'm an administrator I get the ability to change my call recording so I could potentially have one of the different call recording options for every call I make moving forward but by default my position is always with pause and resume. So every inbound call that I make will be recorded. Every outbound call I make will be recorded. And that's also from the mobile as well, using Unity Mobile. And I have the ability from within here to simply hit the pause button once a call is in flight. And it will tell me within the status bar that the call is no longer being recorded. It's paused. And I simply get the ability to then resume the call recording. But this is where your user-initiated start or your on-demand would take place. You'd have it up here on Unity, the call in progress, we hit this button, and then the call recording will start from that point on. Cool. <clears throat> so uh, just to uh, finish off, I want to quickly jump into UBOS and just show you a couple of the things which we've mentioned. So if I, um, let's just close this, jump into UBOS, and we'll jump into me as a user. It may ask me to log in. I may have been timed out here. But uh, we've come into me as a user. Let's just see whether I, uh, I've been logged out or not. In two seconds. <coughs> Maybe that I uh, need to log back in. Yeah, let's do that. So let's just log quickly log back into you, boss. <laughs> two seconds. Looks like my uh, computer's on a bit of a go slow here give it an opportunity to catch up. Cool, and we're going to come into um, me as a user. I'm going to search for uh, Lee Houston. Now, instead of doing this at business level, I'm just going to do it at user level. So I'm going to do it at, at, at me as if I've logged in as an end user and I'm looking for a call that I've, that I've had that I need to access. 
So we'll jump into here. Uh, we're going to come across to reports on the right hand side and we're going to come down to call logger standard. Now in here I've got the ability, as I mentioned before, to search for a time frame. I've got the, uh, sorry, a date range. I've got the ability to search for a time frame here. The ability to look for inbound, outbound calls. The ability to search for the originator number if it's an inbound, the destination number if it's an outbound. So everything I would need to find all of the um, all of the calls that I've had. But an option here, I'm going to untick the, this and click this button here, which says only show recorded calls. So as I mentioned, I have the ability to pause, resume, have the ability to not record certain calls, but I want to see on the 15th of March, which is today, only the calls which have been recorded, and I'm going to hit search. Now that's brought back four calls which I've had this morning. Uh, we can see here, obviously, uh, what the, where they've come from, which is me as a user, the direction, so these all look like they're outbound calls the destination so they're all internal so here's the extension that they've gone to how long those calls were in flight for and then here's where i've got the ability to simply play the call recording straight from within the portal to download the call recording and save it to my desktop and send it to a customer but it's this option on the right hand side i specifically want to show you which is the new functionality which is the audit so by clicking this button here i can see that this call uh, that i had um was uh, there's been two actions this morning so far. At 9.26, Lee, uh, me as a user, I downloaded the call. And at 9.26 uh, and 36, I played the call recording. So within here, uh, this, one, this one particular call has been played from within the portal and has also been downloaded. So for your ma uh, managing director, CEO, peace of mind, they know that at any point they can come into here, they can click the audit log, and obviously this call has had no activity, nobody's listened to it. But it would say on the left-hand side who the portal user is, so you would specifically see the details of the person that has listened to that call. So in a, uh, in a very short amount of time, we've covered quite a lot of ground. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, I would suggest that you, um, as I did before, that you sit down and spend some time with your account manager going through this product in a little bit more detail. Obviously with regards to the commercials, the cost of storage, etc. Speak to your account manager, they'll be able to provide you all of that information, although it will be in your tariffs already if you want to jump into UBOSS and get it. And also all of the help documents um, in order to do the things which I've went through on this call, um, which I've talked about, such as setting up an FTP transfer, uh, all of the, the help documents and guides are in UBOSS in order to enable you enable you to do that but the key thing about that FTP transfer is the customer speci specifies the name of the file we give you all of the tags available such as inbound call outbound call time date um, uh, uh, the user the outbound number all of the kind of things that you would imagine we give you the end user the, the ability to specify how the naming convention of all of the calls that come out via FTP which again is quite unique in terms of uh, what we're seeing in the marketplace from our competition so uh, Charlotte I'm not too sure have you received any questions that you need me to answer before we close off or no, no, Perfect. That's great. Clearly done a good job of, uh, of, of, of giving lots of detail, which is great. Um, so I'd say talk to your account manager. You've got our details. If you need any more help, hopefully it's been useful and you will uh, hear from us within uh, a couple of weeks' time for our next webinar. So stay tuned. Keep looking at the website, everybody. Uh, the Vanilla IP website has a webinar section on there where you can go through. You can see all of the upcoming webinars that we're doing and you'll be able to, uh, to log on and register to them from there. So thanks again for joining. We've had uh, a lot of people join this morning. So I appreciate you taking the time and uh, we'll speak very soon. Thank you very much.